AMD just announced officially that we are going to see the brand new RX 6700 XT. The card seems really nice. It's going to be coming out on March 18th, going to be about $479. And the best news I'll say right off the bat before I jump in and talk about more about the card is that on release day, they're going to have both the reference models and the aftermarket models all being released at the same time. So hopefully there's going to be stock. So let's talk tech. Are you building a new computer or just upgrading an old one? If so, then chances are you need a new Windows 10 key. And CD key sales, they've got you covered. Buying has never been easier. And prices for Windows keys are under $20 and there's even additional discounts. All you need to do is go search for the software that you're looking for, add that software to your cart, create an account, and when you go to checkout, enter the code TT18 to get an additional 20% off. Now, let's frag some. All codes are guaranteed and you'll be up and gaming in no time. First off, I have to say that I think this is the best looking reference card that I've ever seen from AMD. I mean, just look at this thing. It's very clean. It's got a simple two fan design on the reference card. Everything is clean and nice. I mean, the card just looks beautiful. Now under the hood, what you can't see, however, is 40 compute units, 2,424 megahertz gain clock, 96 megabytes of infinity cache, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. The card requires 230 watts of power and it's gonna feature AMD smart access memory. Now, some other things about the card is that the fans are made to be much quieter and they also offer the zero mode as well, which means if there's nothing going on, the card will just remain silent. There are three heat pipes with fins, the card features 11 phase power conditioning and two layers of two ounces of copper. It also features HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4. Now that's just the card itself. Now I have a lot of notes here. There's a lot of things going on. Fidelity FX is going to now be in 40 games. Resident Evil Village is going to be one of those games. Full DirectX 12 support variable rate shading. The card will feature FreeSync Premium and Premium Pro. And what's really crazy is AMD is saying that last year they actually released 250 different models that support these different FreeSync technologies. Now, what's interesting, I think, about this launch more than anything else is that instead of waiting you know, to have any, you know, separate launches between their reference cards and their AIB partners, which is something they always do at AMD. They usually release the reference cards and then later down the road, maybe even a week or two, they'll release the aftermarket cards, but not this time, not whatsoever. And some other things that are really crazy, during the video, they were showing different types of games in comparison to other cards and showing actually how much RAM is used in games. And it seems like really, if you have an eight gigabyte card these days, it's gonna barely be able to pull its weight in some of these games. Cause a lot of these games are taking, you know, up to almost the full 12 gigabytes of memory to run that game with all the bells and whistles on. AMD also compared the new 6700 XT to the 3060 Ti. Now we all know the 3060 Ti, it's going online for mass amounts of money. And we can see that this card looks, you know, to be so far that it's competing pretty head to head What's, you know, with what's going on there. So this could be really, you know, good news across the board. The big question, like always, every time is going to be stock. Now, another question I want to put to you guys is hash rate. 
Do you think that AMD should try to stop miners? Because when I talked to you guys about this on the Nvidia side of things, many people said, you know, yeah, they should make their own separate, you know, mining cards, you know, but other people were like, hey, no way. I don't want my gaming card gimped so that I can't do any mining. Now, honestly, this creates kind of a conundrum, okay? Now, I can honestly see though why the miners and I don't mean miners, children, miners as in pick ass people that are mining stuff. Okay, you perverts out there. Um, the thing is, though, is that they like to buy cards, run them on low power, use them as much as they can, and then turn around and resell them to some gamer being like, hey, the card's barely used. But here's the thing. If a card is strictly geared towards mining, you know, then when they're done with that card, they're stuck with that card. So that's why I don't think that we're probably going to see AMD really addressing, you know, any of this hash rate stuff on their card and preventing, you know, people from, you know, doing all their Ethereum mining or, you know, blockchain mining, whatever kind of mining they're doing out there in the digital world, which has become really popular lately. You know, I don't really see them wanting to buy those cards. They're going to want to buy gaming cards for the very fact that, like I said, they can use them, turn around, sell them, get a, quite a bit of money for them after they make, you know, all their you know profit off the card. And I think right now it's a pretty shoddy situation all around. Now, Nvidia or AMD can't really control who they sell to. Like I said this before, once it goes out to the vendor, it goes out to the supply chain, that's really the end of their job. They provided it to the public through the public service outlet. If those outlets are choosing to do scalping, allow bots, do anything like that, that's not the fault of your beloved company. You know, if you're an AMD fan and you can't get any stock because all of these people bought these cards in all these, you know, semi shady ways, it's really not AMD's fault. They're not the selling police. You know what I mean? They're just really not the selling police. They're engineers, they're manufacturers, you know, but they are not police. And they're definitely not police at the end of the food chain because, you know, the end user is the end of the food chain. They don't follow their cards that far along. So on March 18th, though, we're all going to see if there's going to be stock. Now, if there is stock, AMD is going to put a walloping on NVIDIA for a fact. These cards all look nice. Also, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, for those people out there who are into ray tracing and all that type of stuff, there are actually 40 ray accelerators. So you should be able to play lots of games that are out there. You should be able to do it with ray tracing on. The big question now in all of our minds is how will this ray tracing work in compared to Nvidia's, you know, ray tracing stuff? That's going to be the big question. Can AMD beat them, you know, with an open source? Because everything that AMD is talking about is open source stuff where Nvidia is not. So can their open source beat, you know, what's right now considered to be the market standard, you know, RTX is kind of the ray tracing standard. Now we're going to see if AMD can actually compete, but there's so many games that are coming out that it's going to be very, very interesting to see how these two cards compete. Plus, you're going to notice that there's no more stream processors. They're not calling it that. They've changed everything over. So now if you really look at an Nvidia card spec and you look at an AMD card spec, the specs are pretty similar, you know, other than the fact, you know, these guys use one name, these guys use another name. The nomenclature might be a bit different, but at the end of the day, anti-lag, all of that type of stuff, you know, <laughs> all those technologies are on both cards now. So if you're a person who competitively games, you really want that anti-lag stuff. So when you're making your kill shot, you know, you're gonna be right in there. Um, but I'm glad to see now, you know, that AMD does have that. Cause like everybody said, ray tracing wasn't something that Nvidia invented or owned. I don't know how this got confused out in the market. Nvidia never even said this. All they did was just take an idea that was centuries old and apply it to the new gaming world. And now we're seeing AMD do the same. So that's pretty much it, tech fans. I mean, honestly, their video was really short. They showed a few things. They showed that they're supporting a brand new racing E-Team. And actually that looked pretty cool. The controller they were using to drive around with and stuff looked really nice. 
But all in all, the presentation was one of the shortest I've ever seen in AMD's history. I don't even know if it was 12 minutes long. It seemed to me like it went by like that. So if you guys want more information, I'll have a link down there below to AMD. But it's coming, folks. 6700 XT. 479 for the reference models. We'll have to see how much the aftermarket partners are. Going to be here very soon. So keep your fingers crossed that they're stuck. And we'll just have to see where it goes from there. I'm Elric. You guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. Hey, if you like what you see, hit that sub button, but make sure you turn notifications on or you won't know I'm making videos. Also, if you want a Windows key, make sure you enter TT18 when you're checking out to save yourself some extra money. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can try Amazon Prime for free. I have a link down below. It helps me out and you guys can just check out all that Amazon Prime stuff for free. And if you have a single dollar, you can support me on Patreon. So peace out. We'll see you guys back here for more videos and obviously more video cards are coming. So that's good news. Ah! <laughs>